Today, we're going to show you how to fit and train patients with homonymous hemianopia using peripheral prisms. We've broken this process down into six essential steps. Step one, understanding the prisms. Step two, fitting the prisms. Step three, showing the patient how they work. Then we perform a reach and touch training, a training walk, and then we talk to the patient about follow-up and planning for success with peripheral prisms. Patients with homonymous hemianopia typically lose about half of their visual field, sometimes a bit more, sometimes a bit less. One of the major quality of life complaints of patients with homonymous hemianopia is impaired mobility. Patients complain of just not seeing things and things sneaking up on them. This makes sense because their visual field and their peripheral awareness is gone on one side. Typically, the peripheral vision provides awareness of potential obstacles. Without peripheral vision, that awareness decreases significantly and leaves the patient vulnerable to oncoming obstacles on their blind side. PRISM is most often prescribed to correct double vision. We use PRISM to put two things together into one. For the patient with a hemianopic visual field loss, we have the opportunity to use PRISM in a very different way. Rather than making double vision into single vision, we can make single vision into a highly tolerable form of double vision that patients often find useful in obstacle detection and avoidance. Here's how it works. In your peripheral vision, you see multiple things simultaneously all of the time, but you're not bothered by it. You're only really bothered if what you're focusing on is double. For patients with hemianopia, we put high-powered prisms in the peripheral area of their visual field and create up to 30 degrees of peripheral awareness. Now, when we say they expand the patient's visual field, it does it in an interesting way. A plot of the visual field looks like a horizontal expansion into the blind area, but what the patient actually sees is a bit different. They see the expansion into their existing field, which is why we need a bit of training after the fitting. One of the most important things about peripheral prisms, as with all low vision devices, is defining the scope of use and giving the patient the opportunity to decide when they will and will not benefit from the prisms. If you put the prisms on the patient's glasses all of the time, they may not like them as they will interrupt activities such as watching TV and using the computer. The prisms are to be used when a patient is mobile. As such, they should be fit on a separate pair of glasses or something that fits over or clips on to an existing pair of glasses. If the patient is driving, or you suspect they're driving, fit them with oblique prisms. Oblique prisms are tilted in such a way that they pull information from the midline rather than straight out from the prism location. Oblique prisms will give awareness outside a driver's windshield that horizontal prisms will not. Horizontal prisms give a bit more horizontal field expansion that we currently believe to be better for mobility. Therefore, we currently recommend a patient be fit with horizontal prisms unless they are driving. Observe the patient's natural head posture prior to fitting the prisms. To fit the prisms, mark the pupil on whatever pair of glasses or fitovers you are using. Place a prism 6 mm above the pupil and 6 mm below the pupil, base out on the side with the temporal field loss. Temporary prisms adhere best to concave surfaces, so place the prism on the eyeward surface of the lens. Make sure the prism location does not affect the patient's head posture. If it does, move the prisms, but attempt to maintain the 12 mm separation. Face the patient at a distance of 2 to 3 feet and ask the patient to look at your nose. If there's a significant height disparity, rectify it by sitting or having them sit so your faces are roughly parallel. As the patient is looking at your nose, tell them to report when they can see your wiggling fingers. Bring your fingers from the outside and into their field. When they report that they see your fingers, ask them to turn their head and find your fingers in space through the prism-free portion of the lens. Repeat this exercise about 60 times, testing the field expansion of both the bottom and the top prisms. While looking at the patient, have them tip their head down so they're looking at you through the prism. Inform them that this form of double vision is undesirable and that they should look between and past the prisms rather than through the prisms. 
There is a noticeable dislocation between where the fingers appear and where they actually are. We just had the patient practice turning their head to look. Now we're going to practice it a little bit differently. When something appears in the prism, rather than turning to look, we're going to have the patient quickly reach and touch the finger, while remaining fixated on the nose. While this exercise seems quite similar to the previous, it is fundamentally training a very different motor function. Often the finger appears over your face, so it would behoove you to stand back a bit so you do not get hit in the face during this training exercise. Repeat this about 60 times, testing both the top The prisms are for mobility, so we're ready to take these for a spin. Make sure you escort the patient through this walk. Start with an uncluttered hallway and move to progressively more cluttered areas before attempting stairs. When the patient detects an object, they should be instructed to turn their eyes or head and look at the object through the prism-free area of the lens. Climbing stairs should be very similar to that experienced by a first-time bifocal wearer. The patient should be instructed to look in the clear area between the prisms or under the bottom prism. They should also use handrails whenever possible. At home, the patient should practice the head turning exercise, the reach and touch, and the training walk for 15 to 20 minutes each day. There are free printouts of the training and cleaning instructions available on Chadwick Optical's website. Give the patient printed instructions on what to do with the prisms and when to wear them and set up a follow-up appointment with them for four to six weeks. Let them know that after the training period, there is another type of prism available that expands field nearly twice as much and provides much better aesthetic options. This video was created in an attempt to quickly and visually describe fitting and training with peripheral prisms. At Chadwick Optical, we have a number of additional resources on our website, and we offer technical support and fitting advice for non-standard cases. Please call or email us if you have a case that doesn't quite fit the protocol outlined here today.